My name is Johan Kreten. I promised I was going to tell a story. Seth is sitting on top of a strange hill, stuck between the sea and an inside lake. And high on the hill, hidden in a wild closed garden, stood the local art school. It was in a derelict 19th century mysterious old villa with stained glass windows, creaking floors and marble ornaments. Its director was a young woman, Noel Tissier. She herself, a volcano of energy and vision. And every summer, instead of taking a holiday, she would empty out the classrooms and turn them into an artist-in-residence program called Villa Saint-Clair. When this concept of residencies was still totally new, she would invite artists, writers, poets, curators, collectors, friends, and we would party. So I turned an office into a clay studio. It was fun. We would have to carry the unfired works to the other side of the town to get them fired. There was no kiln at the art school. I would hand form hundreds of flowers in wet clay to make dark, untouchable torsos, fragile, and then later glazed black. These were some of the first odore di femina. These torsos, dark as the rocks in the sea, covered with barnacles and mussels, that alluring story of la mer et la mer, the sea and the mother, and moule moule, mussels and moles. There were also lots of dark skulls in unglazed terracotta clay. Rather depressing, all of that. You know, Set has one of the most beautiful graveyards in the world. It's a seaman's cemetery overlooking the vast expanse of this blue sea. At the end of the summer, we had to make a show but the white cubes didn't do it for me. How could I show my anguish and my sorrow in a white box? I couldn't figure it out. One day, walking with Noel in the graveyard, she pointed out something far in the sea. So we had the naval fire brigade clean out the spaces a little bit to get rid of the feces. We found sea captains willing to bring visitors to the Brislam with their boats. Found the local radios willing to announce the event. And so people took the dinky boats to make the short journey to the other side. To be left by themselves on the big wall to wander around and stumble on my work. Intriguing juxtapositions. No explanations. Just the anguish of not getting on a boat back. The feeling of being stuck in a place between the land and eternity. A place in limbo. We are in 1991. Around us, lots of people disappear. Young artists in the prime of their lives. One day they're there, the next day gone. A dark shadow takes the joy of our young lives away. There's another plague, an invisible plague that kills. What stronger place than this Brise Lam to show this? as this was used before as a quarantine. Quarantaine, quarantine. Quarantaine, quarante, forty. 
40 days of isolation because of fear, because of superstition, because of suspicion, in quarantine, instilling these feelings in the people who visited was my strongest victory. Years later, I'm back in set. There's a big solo show organized by Noël Tissier of my work at the CRAC, Centre Régional d'Art Contemporain. There's these gigantic dark looming birds, sparkling brightly colored ceramics, golden figurines. And a few examples of the Odori di Femina. I still have not solved the mystery. I model them when I'm down. They're still beautiful and mysterious. They're still untouchable, sharp, and way stronger than they look. And Jean-Michel Otoniel is still there, as is Noël Tissier. With Noël, we're preparing another show, this time for the Villa Medici in Rome. I will take a dark torso there too. And I also will take Odore di Femina to New York, to Perrotin, when this storm is over. In a few weeks, in a few months, next year. And that before we make our own crossing. There must be hope. So please, stay strong, stay safe. Love from Paris, Johan.